in order to be delivered, we need to understand who we are in Christ, That's right. but we also need to understand that we have an enemy. Mm -hmm. And our enemy will do anything to destroy us. So today we're going to expose uh, the schemes of the enemy, and I hope we'll learn a few things. So we're going to talk about the spirit of Python. And we're going to see uh, uh, this spirit in the Bible, and then we're going to pray, because I want everyone here to, to be set free from any demonic influence or anything that the devil is doing in your life. So, Python, or in the Bible, it's with a, a U, it's Python, it's, it's pronounced Python in Greek. Uh, it goes back to uh, uh, the, the Greek mythology. And uh, in Greek mythology, it's the name of a serpent or a dragon. So, so the Bible talks about dragons and, uh, and serpents, these beings, uh, uh, reptiles. And there was a city uh, called the city of Delphi, um, uh, that, uh, and it says that uh, Apollo, which was a, a Greek uh, god, killed this, uh, uh, this dragon, and then the spirit entered Apollo himself. So they had this uh, religion there in that place in Greece. And an oracle is, a, is defined as a place where people will go uh, to, for advice or prophecy. So uh, the prophetic uh, dimension of faith, it's not exclusive to Christianity. There's uh, prophets that are not Christian prophets. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, then, then we have infiltrations of, uh, of people in churches that use prophecy for their own profit and their own agenda. And they need also to be exposed. And, and sometimes Christians are deceived. And we don't want to be deceived. So today I'm going to bring you scripture. I'm going to bring you some uh, knowledge about this subject, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to uh, have a, a great time of deliverance here. Amen? Amen. We're going to do some prayers together. Yes. Now, in, in the Bible, <coughs> so we, uh, the, there's a, the Strong's Concordance, uh, says that Puthon comes from Putho, or the, that region uh, of, of, of Greece, where there was divination, or there, there were the soothsayers. You know, people will, will uh, seek uh, uh, advice from uh, these people uh, that have a spirit of divination. Uh, and in Acts chapter 16, that will be our passage for today, we see that there was a young lady that was possessed by this spirit of divination. And, and um, uh, in the English language, we have, uh, you know, the, the, the word divination in other languages, like in French, uh, they, they, uh, it says it was a, a, um, um, a spirit of pythos or python. So it's the spirit of the snake. So let's read this passage in the Amplified Bible. You can follow on your version. So let's open in Acts 16 and verse, we're going to read verse 16. The Amplified Bible really... Uh, brings a different uh, view of this verse. So I'm going to read it uh, starting on verse 16. And it says, As we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit of divination, claiming to foretell future events and to discover hidden knowledge. And she brought her owners much gain by her fortune telling. She kept following Paul and the rest of us, shouting loudly, These men are servants of the Most High God. They announce you the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. Then Paul, being sorely annoyed and worn out, turned and said to the spirit within her, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very moment. Mm -hmm. So this is our passage for today. And this is the, the story of the girl that had the spirit of divination. Now notice that the girl was telling the truth. She was telling, these men are servants of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have uh, uh, salvation. They have a message of salvation. So she was not lying. And many times... People that are under the influence of a spirit of divination, they can talk about God, they can po point the way to God, but there's always something hidden behind that spirit. You, we can see that 
Paul, after a few days, it wasn't immediate, but after a few days, it says he got really upset. That's right. The Amplified Bible says annoyed. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we have the Spirit of God in us, we can discern sometimes, uh, you, you know, uh, things can uh, seem that they're coming from God, but sometimes they're not coming from God. Mm -hmm. And we need really to have discernment in our lives to have the presence of the Holy Spirit right. in order to identify these things. Now, a snake is not a pretty animal. I know that some people, uh, they have snakes as pets. Uh, I don't know if any of you has a snake as a pet, any of you? No. no? <laughs> you have cats or dogs or something cats. like that? Well, that's okay. But usually we don't have snakes. You know, some, some people, they really lo love snakes and they have snakes as pets. And uh, it's uh, kind of strange how you can, uh, you know, have affection for an animal like that, but but in those tem in that temple they had the 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 snake as 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 a as an instrument of divination. You know that's it's not by accident that the Bible says in in uh, in Mark chapter 16 that we, we will handle and will be able to handle snakes even snakes and it's not literally snakes and we know that some Christians they actually hold snakes and yeah. do those kind of weird things thank God we're not that kind of church here <laughs> I would like to come here and see people handling snakes but what the Bible says is that we have the power to step uh, into snakes and scorpions and to destroy the works of the enemy Amen. so the spirit of Python it's a powerful spirit of divination it brings false prophecies it can also infiltrate uh, even churches and there's a, there's an effect of that snake now the the rebel uh, Bible dictionary describes divination as an attempt to learn about the future by observing omens so what people, uh, uh, those uh, sorcerers will do, they will even look into levers of animals and, and, uh, and they will manipulate or control people and try to uh, guess future events through uh, supernatural forces. And we know that sometimes uh, sorcerers and people that do not walk with God, they have these powers of divination. They can foretell certain events. And then people uh, will uh, be uh, in awe of, of the, those forces, those powers, and they'll be completely submitted to these people. Right. We have famous politicians that were under spirits of divination. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago, I remember that the Prime Minister of Canada was often seen in a show on, on, on TV with a, a, a fortune teller. I don't know if you remember that. It was a, a, a lady uh, with a ponytail. It was the JoJo Psychic Alliance. Yeah. And the Prime Minister of Canada will go there to look for advice for, to lead the nation. That's, that's really terrible. That's right. eh? yeah. But those things happen. Thank God we have now a, a Christian Prime Minister that doesn't get involved in, 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 in these things. And we, we should pray for our uh, rulers, yes. for the people that are, that, that are in front, uh, that there are in positions of eminence in the country, and we should pray for them, even if we don't agree with their politics. Thank God for Christian men and women of That's God right. that get into power. Mm -hmm. So we should never forget about those. Because whenever we have a nation and people in authority that submit to these powers of divination, then we have all sorts of evil things That's happening. Right. That was what, hap what was happening in this city. And we're not going to read, but, but Paul and the, and the apostles, they paid a high price for what they did. Right. Because they cast out the spirit of divination. And they had to pay a price. Why, why did they do this? Because it's the, the role of the Christian right. to clean up the air, to clean up the spiritual atmosphere of a place. Right. Now, do you think that there is sorcery and witchcraft here in Oka, yes. here in Kanesatake? Yes. Is, is there people that even, you know, consult the spirits yes. and, and they use even animals, you know, in order to, to, uh, to foretell the future? Yes, there is. So as Christians, we need to be filled with this authority right. and to break the powers of the enemy. Amen. And sometimes Christians are under the influence of these spirits. <clears throat> and we're going to uh, learn about this. So. Let's bring some definition. In Acts 16.16, 16, this form of divination uh, practiced and used by oracles 
um, uh, uh, happening special places. And uh, we know that, for instance, in the Old Testament, in Mesopotamia, uh, people uh, look, they had priests that uh, sacrificed animals in order to foretell the future. So python, uh, it's a powerful snake, it's, it's revealed as a snake. And this uh, snake, it's, like, it's a spirit that chokes people. And, and we know that sometimes people seem to be op so oppressed, they're like choked. Uh, 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 by an invisible force and when that happened it can happen to a person it can happen to a family it can happen even to a church I've seen churches under the spirit of Python and when that spirit is revealed and the intercessors start to take authority then we have a breakthrough what we call a breakthrough sometimes we don't know why we preach the gospel we do everything right and it seems that we're choked something is choking the blessing of God and, and we question uh, and we say, uh, you know, how come we don't see uh, freedom and deliverance since right. people getting saved? And many times, it, it, the origin, it's a spirit. And we need to cast yes. out spirits. The Lord called us as Christians. We have the authority of God to rebuke all powers of, of hell and we shouldn't be afraid. That's you know, right. I'm not afraid of any evil spirit. Mm -hmm. There's no evil spirit that can put me under fear. That's you know right. why? Because I, I know that I have the power of God in me. And you know that you have the power of God in you. So you should you shouldn't be afraid of the devil, af afraid of spirits, not even afraid of snakes. That's right. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we have natural fears of certain animals, or, uh, or we have, uh, you know, uh, certain animals give, give, give us, you know, creeps, even small animals. Yeah. You know, I've seen people afraid of, of mice, of rats, and, you know, jumping, oh, a, a mouse, and, and poor mouse, the poor rat is really afraid of you. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you. And, and uh, so I'm not talking about animals, but, but there's a comparison in the Bible, and there's a reason why this spirit of divination is called the spirit of python now what are the symptoms of a spirit of python uh, when you pray to possess the land of god there's a spirit that will oppose you that's the spirit of python and he starts to fight against you we we've seen this in the old testament we've seen this in the new testament and uh, the actions of this spirit in churches uh, will choke ministry will choke finances uh, uh, and people uh, uh, will feel uh, heaviness, depression, oppression, pressure. And when the constriction gets stronger, there's discouragement. In a, in, a, in a group of people or in a church, we can have factions and divisions. And sometimes we don't understand why. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And, and people are, are blind to see that many times it's the operation of the spirit of Python. So as Christians, we really need the prophetic ministry uh, 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 active in churches right. so these demons will be exposed. Mm -hmm. You notice that Paul had nothing against this, this uh, young lady. Paul addressed the spirit and he told the spirit, come out of this poor girl. Mm -hmm. And she was delivered and then she got into trouble. Because she used to give much profit yeah. to, to the people that enslaved this poor girl. And now she couldn't guess anything. Now she was free. Now the spirit was gone. They were really, really, really upset. Mm -hmm. So we see that this spirit uh, has a lot to do with financial issues. You know, many times when a Christian is under financial pressure, there's a spirit that is trying to choke. The, finance, the finances of that person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, church, it's not about just a message. Church is about the power of God. That's right. If we don't have the power of God in church, mm -hmm. if we don't have miracles happening and deliverance and, and change happening in the church, something is missing. That's right. And, and so today I'm exposing the spirit of Python, not to scare you, not to, talk, to give you knowledge, but to tell you that God wants to deliver you. Yes. And today, you're going to be delivered from this oppression that is choking you. Now, uh, spirits have families or nests. And uh, other spirits that work with Python are beguiling spirits, seducing spirits, Jezebel spirits, controlling spirits, manipulating spirits. 
And we can and must break their power in the name of Jesus. So we need to do, to do this. And when we battle the enemy, we use the authority we have in Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus, to break and tear apart all the powers of the enemy. So we need to understand as Christians, we have the authority mm -hmm. to cast out these spirits from other people, from organizations, from churches, from regions, even from people in government. That's right. You know, that's why we're here on earth, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And if we don't manifest the, the, the light that God placed in us, you know, then we'll have darkness and we give freedom for these spirits to operate. So our uh, fight, it's not against the people that are under the influence of these spirits, but many times we need to address the spirits that are in them. The ruling spirit of uh, Python many times hides uh, behind other demons uh, that control their actions. You know, when you have a battle, uh, generals are not often seen in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Generals stay uh, in a position of um, authority, they're controlling the army, they're giving the orders, but they're hiding. It, it's not very often that you see a general being killed in combat. Right. Only when, you know, when it's the end of a battle or it's a desperate situation or the, 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 the place of the general is identified. No, so, so if an army knows where the general of the other army is, they will try to kill the general. Because if they kill the head, you know, they cripple the army. That's what the devil tried to do with, with, uh, with Jesus Christ. The devil thought, if I kill Jesus, it's over. Mm -hmm. But he was mistaken. Amen. Because Jesus could be <clears throat> killed. Mm -hmm. He is life. And he gave himself to die for you and That's me. Right. It, it was, the devil thought, I killed Jesus, it's over. I, I will rule. But what he, he didn't realize is that Jesus couldn't be killed. Thank you, Lord. Jesus couldn't be killed. Nevertheless, he took upon himself your sin and my sin. And he went deep down into hell and he brought up to, to paradise all of those that were enslaved by the devil. Mm -hmm. That's the role of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's to bring deliverance. That's and he told the disciples, I give you authority. I give you the power to cast down and to break and to sever all the, those ties that the enemy has in regions. You have the authority. That's why the Lord said, go and baptize nations. Mm -hmm. So we, we have the power to do mighty works. But if we keep as a church to ignore these things, if, we, if our message is just a message, you know, about the love of God and how, how good God is, that, that message is needed. But we also need to use our authority. That's right. Not to go against people, not to do crazy things, but to cast down the powers of hell right. and to bring deliverance. And if you're being choked in your finances, if there's a spirit of division, if you feel that you're under uh, uh, the influence uh, and the control of evil spirits, today is the, the day of your deliverance. Amen. And I'm here to give you good news. Mm -hmm. Now, divination means uh, using witchcraft to try to discover future events. And uh, by supernatural means. And some people will make money out of this. You have some TV shows with those uh, soothsayers. And people will call and they'll try, uh, even live on TV, to tell the future and to, and to tell what's going on with that person. And, and, and that's a spirit of divination in operation. And that's around us. It's everywhere. Now, we have the Holy Spirit right. to foretell also the future. Divination, it's nothing but the devil right. trying to <clears throat> copycat the power of God that should be in us. Christians. That's right. Amen? Amen. So we need the prophetic anointing in operation in a church, you know, to give us, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to make the right decisions, to do what's right. But we need to, to, uh, to, to understand that many times the devil will infiltrate false prophets, people that use divination for their own profit, in order to promote themselves, mm -hmm. in order to, to make money out of this. You know, certain times 
There's even people on, on TV, and it's it really discuss. It's disgusting, mm -hmm. you know, when people, uh, you know, use all sorts of things, you know, to to tell you know just send money, send money, send money, send money. When you see people that say they're they're Christian and they're all about money and bring money, bring money, there's a symptom of the spirit of Python, mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't even realize they started out good. They wanted just you know to to serve the Lord. But then they were tempted on their on their way of serving the Lord. You know, when we uh, walk with the Lord, uh, it's not an easy way, and sometimes there's temptation. And when people have fame and they're you know they're honored, they're on TV, they do all these things. Sometimes they fall into those temptations, mm -hmm. and the devil tries to defeat them. That's right. And and Python <clears throat> will try to choke them, and they fall into financial problems. When you fall into financial problems, it's very often the spirit of Python trying to choke you. But I have good news. Mm -hmm. When you are in Christ, you can be delivered. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Cer certain times it's not natural. It's, you have so many bad events happening that you, you say, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And, and it, you should just remain under pressure. You need to react. You need to do right. something. You need to claim on the, plow, on, the, on the power of the blood of Jesus over your life. Amen. Now there's other symptoms of this spirit. Python prevents business deals from closing. Uh, he prevents sales from occurring. So certain people, they're in business, they're Christian, and, 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 and they, they, they're not doing sales. Their business is going bad. They have a house for sale and nobody goes there to see, the, to see that house. And, and in a church, sometimes you know, it's choking the finances, and the bills cannot be paid, and you can a church cannot have afford to have a pastor or afford to to buy a, a new a new system or a, a new PA or a new guitar or a, something new because the finances are choked, and we need to break that power. We must learn to differentiate <coughs> fiction from fact also, and uh, and reality from reality. Because there's a difference between the truth and falsehood. And that, and that can be very subtle. And so the, the, the Python operates also in churches, churches and groups. When you see a person that always has to be the center of attention, very often that person doesn't realize, but uh, th that spirit of control that wants to get attention, it might be the influence of the spirit of Python. Now, we shouldn't uh, label people. We need the prophetic operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the discernment of spirits to set people free from this spirit, from this influence. And such uh, people may be, I'm not saying they are, but they be, may be under the influence of a Python spirit. And this ruling spirit must uh, be overcome or people will become confused. And sometimes people are so confused, they say, is this the power of God? Is this the enemy? What, what's going on here? So whenever we have confusion, we open doors for these spirits to operate. When we have the power of God in a the place, there's no confusion. That's right. We're not confused. We know this is God. Yeah. This is God. You know, we all have our doubts. And when we see things in operation, we can, uh, you know, have our doubts. Nothing wrong in having doubts. But when the Spirit of God is in a place, there is no confusion. That's right. Amen? Amen. Okay, I hope you're learning. I was getting to, I was getting to the end of this message. Another manifestation of a Python spirit is that he draws attention away from God and puts attention into people. And when Py Python is operating, look for heaviness, sorrow, depression, oppression. There will be manipulation involved. And people will not be open to correction. They will try to control situations. To give you a spirit of boldness. When you battle the enemy, you must use the weapons of the blood of Jesus, the word of God, in the authority of the name of Jesus. There must be no fear, but you must be very, very bold. Now, the ruling spirit of Python will many times hide behind other demons, but he's controlling their actions. Like a general in an army, uh, they don't expose themselves up front, but control from secret places. And divination means using witchcraft to try to discover future events or cause future events to happen by supernatural means. 
when you see the spirit of Python, the spirit of the nation operating, you'll also see false prophesizing and the pro profit motive. So money will always be attached just as it was in Acts 16, 16. There are symptoms of the spirit of Python. Python prevents business deals from closing favorably, favorably, or he prevents sales from occurring. Church finances may dry up or constrict because Python will try to choke the believer in the church. We must learn to differentiate fiction from fact and unreality from reality because the difference between the truth and falsehood can be very subtle. Now, Python operates also in churches. So in churches or groups, when you see a person that always has to be the center of attention, you will find they are manipulating and controlling those who are giving the attention. So such people may be under the influence of a Python spirit. This ruling Python spirit must be overcome or people will become confused, deceived and seduced and factions will arise and the church split may even occur. Now, another manifestation of a Python spirit is that he draws attention away from God unto people. When Python is operating, look for heaviness, sorrow, depression, oppression. There will be manipulation involved. People will not be completely open to correction. They will try to control every situation. We'll see customs and traditions that may be strong and have to be torn down. Visions and creativity will be choked. Python will cause people to become fearful, weak and weary. People will start questioning their own vision, position and calling. And he tries to squeeze out you of everything that, that God has called you to do. Python usually has several spirits closely aligned that he controls. There is often found uh, beguiling spirits, as I told you, and to beguile means to deceive, to allure, to entice, and they work to cause division in the body of Christ. They often use charm and charisma to cause diversion. They try to pull you away from Jesus and the leader uh, that God has placed over you. They will pull you from one church to another church. There may be seducing spirits such as those that draw a person to a cultist. And the cultist may be operating under seducing spirits. And that draws people. Seducing spirits use lust, greed, pride to lead people astray from God. There may be Jezebel spirits operating in men as well as in women. Such spirits influence individuals in the church to bring about false worship and hurt to the church. A Jezebel spirit in another person can make you feel drained when you are around them. Just the presence of that person will drain you. And when Python is operating, look for a spirit of grief to try to get a foothold. He always tries to bring spirits of bitterness, sorrow and disappointment so that you'll end up feeling like everything is falling apart. You need to encourage yourself in prayer and begin to pull them down. Don't complain, but express your love to God. Worship God and pray in the spirit. Remember, Python wants to create confusion, so you, you will allow doubt to manifest in your mind. When this family of spirits um, is operating, you need to ask God to reveal to you what is in operation. When you understand they are in operation, look at your past generations for curses and repent of the sins and iniquities of your ancestors. I'll do it up to 15 generations back and put them under the blood of Jesus. Then command those spirits to leave you, your house, family and church in the name of Jesus. Become involved in as much praise and worship as you can so you can maintain the victory. And remember the battle. The battle. Remember who you are battling against. It is not flesh and blood. Stay in prayer as much as you can and remain obedient to God and His Word. Become accountable to a church and a pastor. To destroy Python and his, this family, you must first recognize that he is operating against you, your family, or church or area. You must want to destroy him. He must know that you are aware of him and that you do not want him. In other words, get rid of all doubt and disbelief and pride. Look at your generational ancestors for roots and destroy the legal rights of generation curses and associated spirits by repenting of the sins and iniquities of your mothers, fathers, as I told you, break curses back to 15 generations, put them under the blood of Jesus. When breaking the curses, specifically renounce and repent from, this, from those specific spirits operating that came 
into you when you were conceived as a result of sins and iniquities of your ancestors. Repent of all judgments you have made that allow the opportunity for curses to pass into you. Finally, deal with any unforgiveness from your heart and renounce all bitterness. It, 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 there is a problem uh, with the pastor or fellow church mem member. Will to forgive them from your heart and ask God to bless them. When all of the legal right for Python and his family to be present is dealt with, then you bind all of the spirits and commandment, command them to turn loose of each other. Sit in silence and not communicate with their ruler spirits or other spirits or their family. Specifically, bind the strongman spirits named Python, Divination, Jezebel, Beguiling, Seducing and Grief. Then you begin commanding the spirits to manifest and come out and leave. I'm going to ask you now to repeat a prayer, a warfare prayer after me. And as you do this prayer, just pray to the Lord and say, Heavenly Father, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as my protection. I surrender myself completely and undeservedly in every area of my life to you. I take a stand against all the workings of Satan that will hinder me in my prayer life. I address myself only to the true and living God and refuse any involvement of Satan in my prayer. Let us continue and do a, a prayer of authority and just say, Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to leave my presence with all your demons. I bring the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ between us. I resist all the endeavors of Satan and his wicked spirits to rob me of the will of God. I choose to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I pull down all the strongholds of Satan. Now please do this general confession in prayer and say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Messiah, come in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. You died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I now confess all of my sins and repent. I now ask you to forgive me and cleanse me in your blood. I believe that your blood cleanses me continually from all sin. Thank you for redeeming me, cleansing me, justifying and sanctifying me in your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. And don't forget to resist the devil. James 4, 7, it says, So be subject to God, resist the devil, come close to God, and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soiled hands clean. Realize that you have been disloyal. Wavering individuals with divided interests and purify your hearts of your spiritual adultery. Remember always to resist the devil with the word of God. Most Christians are still waiting on God to make the devil and his demons flee from us. But Jesus said, in my name, you will have authority over demons and drive them out. I hope that this teaching was profitable to you. And as we will continue this teaching next week, please tune into these recordings and get filled with the word of God and believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will deliver you as you exercise the authority that he has given you. God bless you and we have an appointment with you here again next week.